learning and a practice. As teachers, we all know the importance of this because this preparation stage makes sure that we have a structured lesson and make sure that our students have an effective learning experience. So today I'm going to introduce to you three awesome EFL teachers who's currently teaching in China. So now let's meet them first. The first one is my South African friend, Dylan Mito. The second is my British friend, Ibrahim. And the third one is my Chinese local friend, Stacy. They have shared with me their perspectives on this very matter. Let's get started. Okay, first one, he's a drama major, and he has a, a background as a researcher. Uh, he has years of teaching experiences in South African high schools, and he has more than five years teaching experience in China. His teaching context is adult EFL and corporate training. When he prepares the lesson, firstly, he will be looking at the school system. How does different lesson type fit in, different, fit in the school system? And what lesson type is he teaching? Then he will be looking at the content. Obviously, let's say if you are teaching grammar, past the simple tense, you as a teacher, you have to know your grammar. The third part for him is the most important part, that is to know our students, to know who are we teaching. This means to a psychological preparation about the student's personality, their learning style, so that we can find a way how can we work with them, and how can we guide them to work with each other to bring out the best effects from the class. So, in order to achieve this goal, we as teachers have to really know our students and interact with, from, with them from a personal level. That means to form a teacher-student relationship. And that is where you will know exactly what they need. And that is where you can better cater their personal needs. When teaching, strategy he likes to use in the class is what called Kagan Cooperative Learning Strategy. So as the name suggests, it's all about cooperation. So there are a lot of teamworks. We are often divided into teams and there is a structure and there is instructions we have to follow. And we teams work together to complete a project. With this approach, students learn language as well as so social skills because they have to cooperate as a team member. Whereas his other context where he teaches the corporate training, he has a mixed level group and he has longer hours. That is where he really scaffolds the lesson from the very beginner level to the advanced level activity so that he can include all the learners from every level. I found amazing about his mixed level classes, I never get bored. Sometimes teachers aim at the middle and for high level students, they get bored. But his approach makes sure it's challenging enough and for higher level students, it's a chance for them to reveal the basics. Now let's move on to teacher number two. He's a British teacher, more than five years teaching experience in China. He's a content is adult EFL and VIP lessons. This teacher is big on inspiration and professional development. When he prepares the lesson, the first thing he will be looking at is student number. How many students are there? It depends on this number. It, de it will decide which activity can be done in the classroom. Then he will see the student proficiency level to make sure the lesson content and the difficulty is appropriate. <coughs> his most important aspect to think about his lesson objective. Students will be able to, this part will lead him and guide his whole lesson. So one approach he likes to use is open-ended questions. Instead of asking yes or no question, 
he likes to ask what, how, and why. Because these type of questions embraces different opinions so that it promotes interactions in the classroom. We all know how big the interaction is. And sometimes when we do not go into a different answer, we think and share in this open question, it's, it's where inspiration comes in. Same as, so same as me, he's also very big on interaction. As language teacher, we all know the importance of interaction. It is where progress happens. It is where students really improve. So in order to make, ensure that the interaction happens in the classroom, he likes to do warm up activities. So students will get involved from the get go. And it relaxes them and makes them, they can do more in the classroom. Another way is to make the lesson relevant to the students' personal experience. So that give them the stage to share their personal experience in the classroom. Then of course, teamwork and peer work can also boost the interaction in the classroom. Okay, so, well, there is a VIP class, there is no classmates to interact. That is where he really dig deep into the students' needs and really cater the individual needs because that's why they want the tailor lesson. So he adapts to students' different learning styles and he digs deep on why they want to learn English. And sometimes visually it always helps the visual learners. Each student is unique. As teachers, we have to always learn it and we have to keep ourselves up to date. We don't want to use the same material and same approaches for decades with different students, it just doesn't work. That is where professional development really comes in. Okay, enough with this. Now let's jump down to teacher number three. She is a Chinese local English teacher and she has only less than a year's teaching experiences her context is low-level adult EM <coughs> and kids VIP. So with this content, it's very interesting because under the Chinese context, students tend to be very self-conscious and the goal for them is to speak out because they need a relaxed classroom atmosphere so they can speak out. So she will do this, and then she will reveal at the end of class to say, yes, you have learned something. Confidence is essential for the lower level learners. For her next level class, she sets multiple objectives for different learners. Then for me, maybe sometimes it works. I don't know about this very well. But kids is a special group. They don't understand your math language, so you don't use them when you teach kids grammar. You use a variety of ways to drill them, and you make them evolved. And they have a short attention span, so each activity shouldn't be that long. That, that is what she do. Acquisition is more than learning. Okay. I think that is all that I have to share with all of you. I hope you learn some approaches from them, and I personally enjoy it. If you have asked now. <laughs>